All right, you've been warned. You should have already turned the radio dial, but because you didn't, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God is wild. God created quasars. God created uh, black holes. He made dinosaurs. He made lions. He made the, the wilderness, and he made you. You know, people say, I'm going to go out into the wilderness and get closer to God. Well, built, built, built into that word is the word wild. So don't think you're going to control God. Uh, God is, God is the, the God of the universe. He's the author of, of your faith. And he has a beautiful, beautiful plan for your life. But get ready. If you, wanna, if you want to uh, have the ride of your life, as we say in surfing, you got to paddle into that big wave. And that big wave is the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing more radical than you can do and say, than to just say, yes, Lord, bring it. Uh, I want to give all of my life to you, and I want all of you. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're excited. We have our guest, Deacon Gerard Marie, is with us today from the from the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia. Uh, you know, here in Waikiki, it's interesting because in Hawaii, because uh, we're the most diverse state in the whole country. Uh, I am I am among a minority here in Hawaii. One fourth of the people in Hawaii are Caucasian, and my two of my sons got to go to Kaimuki High School. It's it's like the coolest high school here, but it's local kind high school, you know, and they were a minority there, but they were so loved and welcomed and brought in by the by the local brados, as we say here in Hawaii, uh, and just made part of the ohana. In Hawaii, uh, if you're if you seen someone like a surfer bra or something, you go, hey, bra, what's up, brada, you know, or they say, hey, cuz, you know, cuz, or if the person's a little bit older, we go, auntie, can I help you with your groceries, or or someone, or a young man will go. Uncle Bear, Uncle Bear, I had a problem with my girlfriend. I got to talk to you about it. I got her in trouble. What, what, what should I do? You know, so there's an Ohana sense of feeling here across all different races because we're all like just all in here together. We have Chinese, Filipino, Japanese, uh, African-Americans, Mexicans, uh, Caucasians, and, of course, the noble, the nobility of our islands, the Hawaiian nation. And so we kind of get that. We kind of get It's so beautiful. We call a, a hapa. Hapa, so many intermarriages where they have the Hapa children, you know, where we, so it's just, it's just, it's just a, a blessing to be here, but it's also a lesson for myself in learning what it is, and it's, I'm a minority, I'm a guest on this island, even though I'm, I'm Kama'aina, I've been on the islands now for close to 25 years, uh, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still not Hawaiian, I never will be Hawaiian, I love the Hawaiian, uh, the Hawaiian language, the culture, the beauty, of the Hawaiian people, the love, the aloha, which is, means to give breath. The, the, the true sense of love here is overwhelming. And the power of the people, because uh, people here love the water. And when you're in the water, you, re, you get humbled. <laughs> but you also sense to feel, you sense your power when you're riding in big waves. And it takes a powerful person to love. In Hawaii, we experience so much love. It's almost like I tell my wife, Cindy, we're walking along the beach, Let's go this way, because if we go that way, if we go too close to the beach, it's going to take us an hour to go 300 yards, you know, because everyone greets and there's so much love here. Uh, and that's what we believe in. We believe in the dignity of, of every human person, that God made every human person of incomparable worth. And how do we know that? Because he sent his son to become one of us while remaining all God to become all men. And not only that, but to die for us and to rise for us. So we believe in the dignity of every single human being. And that's the Catholic way. And so we have a, br a brother with us. Well, I guess you have to formally call him Deacon, Deacon Gerard Marie, uh, who's, who's uh, from uh, African-American, and he's a, he's, a, he's a deacon in the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia, at the Parish of St. Timothy. Aloha, Deacon. 
Aloha. How are you doing, Bear? Hey, dude. What are you? What, what are you wearing? On, what is? What is your? Uh, you're wearing a, ne- a couple, three things around your neck, as, as far as I can see. There's a. Is that a yes. miraculous medal, or what do you have there? <laughs> yeah. So one is because I love Our Lady. One is a miraculous medal. So that's that's one of the things. Yeah. The second is my Deacon Cross. So that's. Uh, oh, I, I didn't know. A, that, let me yeah. see that. That's beautiful. So yeah, it has. Oh. You can see it has a little stole across it. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. so cool. So that way people can know that I'm a deacon, you know. Um, oh, I've never seen one of those. Somebody to pray with them. Yeah. I never, I never, never realized that. That's so cool. My dad, you know, as I, is, is, was a Catholic deacon. Oh, that's and awesome. So, that is yeah. awesome. Well, I learned a lot about what it takes, uh, what happens uh, in that formation process. We, I, I want to backtrack with you, uh, your, your kind of your journey, and then that beautiful formation process that takes place. I saw my father not just grow in knowledge, uh, but I saw him formed. I saw a, a transformation in him as a person and my, and my mother, too. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about your, your journey uh, before we get? Because we're going to get into this whole area of what's going on in the culture today. Uh, and so but but let's lay the groundwork by finding out who, who in the world you are. Why? 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 Uh, what what causes you? <laughs> All right. Well, I, I would say, yeah, <laughs> my cause. And this is this is great. My cause is really loving the cross and that you were talking about the waves and stuff like that there's a story because i used to be a youth director and i'll talk a little bit about that but um one time i took the kids we went on this canoeing trip and we were going out into the waters and it's nice and calm and the kids were like (laughs) splashing each other like oh they're like ha because i wasn't deacon anthony yet they're like oh mr anthony ha ha so they're splashing each other and i put my i put everybody's lunches in the back of my Ah. The canoe. <laughs> so we hit these waters and then all of a sudden my boat flipped over the kids are like reaching out their paddles to try to save me yeah. all except for this one kid he stands up on his canoe and goes no not the cookies instead of me but i mean but i think that story kind of embodies <laughs> my journey sometimes i fall over sometimes i tip over sometimes it's you know people are looking at me and they're they're thinking about the cookies because there's distractions <laughs> but, 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 but then most of all there's love in the cross like mm. my uh, students trying to save me from floating down the river right? though so they cared about did they go for the cookies first or for you yeah, the, the one kid went for the cookie first. It wasn't even about me. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. And I was, once I got out the river, I was joking with him. I said, well, you know, if cookies go into a river, they're going to be pretty soggy. <laughs> yeah, but they're still cookies. You know, in Hawaii, we call it huli. When we, like right, right now, I got my outrigger, the ama, the outrigger of my canoe. I'm working uh-huh. on uh, refiberglassing parts of it. And uh, it's because I hulied it. So huli huli oh. is when you flip the canoe. Like, oh, okay, or, okay. Yeah, and so the so huli huli chicken is rotisserie chicken, right? So that's oh. how you, that's <laughs> oh, how you that's remember. Awesome. Okay, that's so it's awesome. it's you know it's it's you could you can be so cool when you're out in a canoe, you know. Oh, I'm in I'm in the wilderness. I'm with God. I'm enjoying nature. I'm paddling my canoe, maybe catching wave, and I just feel just so one with God. And then all of a sudden, I'm I'm under I'm, I'm flipped under water, and yeah. uh, I usually I learn to leash myself to my canoe. Otherwise, it 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 continues to make the surf the wave, and I'm kind of you know. Maybe a quarter yeah, of a mile out to see. <laughs> yeah. I can hold you under. So, I mean, that, that's, that's one of the well, big how, things. How, how did you get yourself in the predicament? Let's go back, way back to the beginning, uh, how, how you got yourself in a predicament. I used to be a youth group leader, too, so I know. Oh, okay. So, uh, how, how in the world that happened? You must have missed a meeting, and they said, who should be our youth group leader? <laughs> well, who's not here? Let's, go, let's get let's get Gerard Marie to do it. But t- t- talk story with us about were you raised Catholic, or what was the story there? Yeah, so actually, I tell you, my story, even just with the cross, it starts off very, very in the womb because mm. doctors told my mom that she would never be able to have children. But then God has a sense of humor. She had twins. They were uh, looking for the afterbirth and they didn't even know I was there. Oh, my they goodness. On my feet. <laughs> right? and then, so then I came out after my brother and they were thinking about names. And, they called uh, they you were, A.B. Yeah. They were, yeah, well, they were after birth. One and two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah A.B. after birth. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> and they were, they were going to name us Greg one and two um, after, you know, my dad. Yeah. And then my mom said jokingly, she says, 
we are not the foremans. We are not going to name our children after numbers. So we got <laughs> Gerald and Gerard. So that's so that's when I oh, came. Oh, see, and my dad's name is Greg, by the way. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So you're so so your your brother is Gregory, and you're or Gerald, and you're Gerard. Yes. I was. Thinking, yes, I'm sorry, I got mixed up. Okay, got mixed up. But there's four G's because my mom's name is Gwen. So you know. We have so the Gregory, G's. Gwen, <laughs> Gerald, and Gerard. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, that the was, baby that was of exciting. the family. The baby of the family. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. By five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't get any yeah. land. You don't get to inherit anything. Yeah. The Hebrew <laughs> Hebrew law. Poor, poor, poor Gerard. <laughs> yeah. It's a little switch up. It's a little switch up. So. But um, I think from there we were growing and when we were first born, because we were twins and we were kind of compact, our our legs and stuff were switched in. So like I actually, I don't oh. know if you've ever seen Forrest Gump, like those braces that he had to yeah. wear. Yeah. But we had to wear those as little kids. Oh, that's um, so hard. And, and again, they told us, they told my mom that we would never walk and, uh, you know, that we would have to do this. And. You know, I ended up coaching track and, you know, loving stuff. So, I mean, God really does show his sense of humor. So you, you, you ran track and coached track. I, yeah, I ran yeah. track and then I coached track uh, later on in, in uh, high school track. I, I coached that. So you were for uh, Forrest Gump. Yes, exactly. You know, except I didn't, I didn't need the box of chocolates to motivate me. Well, my, my, son, <laughs> my son Joshua, when he was young, he had something not, not as extreme, but he had to wear a brace for a little bit of time and it's just so hard on a little kid it's just just yeah. so hard and embarrassing and hard and it hurts and it's uncomfortable and so yeah. that that's interesting We're right from the beginning god gave you a challenge you know that you yes to overcome. And I mean, but but the cross the cross is really like i said it's the consistent theme but from that cross you found joy mm. so like later on uh, as i grew up i'll fast forward a little bit i was around 12 years old and um I just felt really weak. I, I lost about 40 pounds in two weeks. And I oh was like, goodness. oh my goodness, what's what's going on? I thought I was going to die. Um, but my dad brought me to the hospital um, and I said, okay, dear Lord, please. So just you were, were, you, were, you, were you raised Catholic or, or Protestant? Oh, yes, or? I was. Yes, okay, yes, yes. So yes. Strong but Catholic. I come from a mixed, I come from a mixed family. So my dad is Catholic. My, I mean, my mom is Catholic. My dad is Methodist Baptist. Okay. So, so you yeah, had you so, had all of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You so have I, no I, excuses. <laughs> hey, listen, Deacon, we got to take a break in a few minutes because I want to get into this story a little bit deeper. But okay. it, Deacon, we're so glad that you're here. And where can people find you? Okay. So my website is www.jmjgerardmarie.com. No one and knows that, how to spell Gerard. <laughs> yes, yes, he's, he's yeah, he's a it's, so it's G as in Gary, E as in elephant, R as in Roger, A as in apple, R as in Roger, D as in dog, and so, then it, Marie, M as in man, A as in apple, R as in Roger, I as in igloo, E as in elephant. <laughs> okay, so jmjgerardmarie.com. This is the Bear Watson convention that you're listening to. We're going to dig a little bit deeper with, with Deacon Gerard here about the dignity uh, of, of, of all men and the brotherhood of all men. And you can find out more about us at deepadventure.com. And we want to especially invite the men to go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave. Uh, we're a group of men that have a secret Facebook group. You can't find us by going to Facebook, but uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, click on the Join the Man Cave uh, button, and you can become part of this this group of misfits. We call ourselves um, the cave, remembering people like uh, King David and his ca the cave of Adullam, where he brought basically all kinds of misfits together, men that were owed money or were running from the law, whatever. They get they all gathered in this cave, and you the least that you would expect that th these men— uh, by God, God forming them and by them forming each other, which is essential, they became the mighty men of valor of King David. And so come join Bear's Man Cave. We, we, we talk with each other uh, on our secret Facebook group. We, we share, we pray, we challenge, we encourage. We just talk about fishing, hunting, and someone just rebuilt a Corvette. So we have all kinds of things going on there. But every two, uh, every two weeks, we have a Zoom video chat. And our goal is to help you grow deeper in your walk with the Lord and to help you launch the gifts and talents that God's given you. Many of the men have started their own 
kind of local man cave or ha- help start a that man is you group or something like that. So um, women, mama bears out there, get your men to come join the man cave. And men, we'd love to have you there. And we'll be talking more about the mama bears when we come back. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. If you go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you press the subscribe button, you get a free download of my audio book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. It's just a great uh, way to read a book, isn't it? Just to be able to listen to it in the car. Maybe if you're listening to it in the car, your young adult children or your your your, your, um, your husband or your brother-in-law might listen to. I'm who am I speaking to? I'm addressing this to the mama bears. There's nothing more ferocious. There's nothing more fierce. Uh, than a mama bear. My son Jeremiah, when we were beginning in our ministry to talk about, maybe we need, we'd have an outreach to the women because actually we have more women who love our show than men They because the women are so viscerally desperate for their men to come closer to the Lord. And so I said, let's call them the mama bears. And then my son Jeremiah walks in the next day and out of the clear blue sky, he says, hey, Dad, remember when we had a cabin in Montana and we came across the, the mama grizzly? Uh, my and my father had a run-in with with more than one with more, one, more than one mama bears when he had his cabin up there too, and uh, you don't want to get between a, a mama bear and her cubs, and uh, they're fierce and they'll fight and they'll defend, and so we're not talking about the sweet cuddly mama bears out there. We're talking about the mama bears out there that that love Jesus and love their family and are praying the rosary. That we go into the church and they're the ones sitting by themselves wearing a wedding ring, praying for their family, and so come come to deepadventure.com and be, become a mama bear. And uh, and uh, and join us and all the mama bears out there. We had someone send us about 40 of these um, mama bear teddy bears. They're Catholic biker teddy bears, but they're Catholic. And so you get one of those too when you join. You get a co- you get a more roar in every pour a coffee mug too when you when the mama bears become a member of the mugs the the mug club. Anyway, we said all that so we could talk to Deacon Gerard Marie. He's a deacon in the diocese of Arlington, Virginia, and uh, he, he he's he's talking to us about how in the world he well he's got so much to say we're going to talk about the culture war and all that's going on right now too but uh no one in the right mind would be a youth group leader and we're trying to figure out why why he no longer is uh he graduated but from that but you were you were telling us about how you had this challenge with your when you were born a twin and your and you had your legs in braces and they said you'd have trouble walking and how you became a you became an athlete a, a track athlete okay yeah. talk story with us about that so yeah, so I mean, constantly like the theme was just like, it's like when the world says don't do something, God was saying, watch me, you know. So oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It was like, so when I was twelve, like I said, I lost about forty pounds. I went from one hundred and twenty pounds to eighty pounds in two weeks, and we didn't know what was going on. Eventually, I, we realized when I was in the hospital, I was passing out. I said a little prayer. I said, dear Lord, let me just see my mom one last time before I die. Cause I thought wow. I was going to die. Wow. Then I woke up, my mom was there and she was scared and, and, you know, but she was happy that I was still there, but we found out that I had diabetes. No. So I, wow. I, I didn't realize what was going on. So I'm sitting there drinking like gallons of milk at a time. Cause I'm so thirsty. Um, but that actually didn't help me cause I couldn't break down the glucose. Mm. So, when I got the diabetes at first, I was mad. I was, I mean, I was furious with God and I, I was yelling and I was like, God, 
this isn't fair. Some people just throw away their health and mine was taken from me. Now, I didn't know at that time someone was in my room because I was in intensive care. He was actually in there for a drug overdose. And he heard that and he was like, oh, hey, man, you can you can have the TV tonight, right? Oh, so you were saying it out loud. You were like, (laughs) so you were getting real with God, though. That's the main thing you were telling. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I didn't realize that there was somebody in the room with me mm. when, uh, when I was doing that. So, but I mean, you just, God works in mysterious ways. But throughout that frustration, and this is kind of where I ended up being a youth director here. I went and I took a walk and I was around and I saw the little toddlers in intensive care. Oh. And most of them were, they were cancer patients, mm. actually. And I walked in there, most of them were bald. But I looked at them and they were all happy playing with their toys and stuff. And I said, if they can be happy knowing that they're terminal, because they, the the nurse actually told me that she said, yeah, these are our our special kids. You know, they don't have long to live. Um, And I said, if they're terminal and can be happy, why can't I be happy? And I still have a chance to live. So those little kids inspired me. And I said, I want to be able to be joyful even amidst the cross, even amidst suffering. And that changed my life. I mean, and I wanted to, I made it my life mission then to be able to bring joy and happiness to people even in their suffering. Now it's funny because you were mentioning about spelling my name. Gerard actually means one of strength. That's what the name oh, means. Oh, that's cool, yeah. So it's like my, our strength is in the cross, but oftentimes we run from it. And that was what I think the good Lord was telling me a life lesson for. It's like, okay, yeah, you gotta, you gotta take up your cross and come follow me. And in Luke's gospel, it says, take it up daily, come follow me. Mm-hmm. Daily, right. And that's when we, and when we take up our cross instead of running from it, that's where we can actually find peace. They have this great saying, it's like, peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of Christ. And where you find that cross is where you find the good Lord. And that's why we have to, but we have to open our eyes to see that. And that's where I wanted to help people. Like my whole goal, all I ever wanted to do in life, even when I was growing up more and more, I just wanted to help people. And that would eventually lead me to being a youth director, then teaching theology and bioethics and coaching high school track and cross country just making people happy. Now, eventually I ended up being a deacon because I wanted to make people happy, to help them to see that suffering does not have the last word, but love does. And that's what we have to, and that was pretty much my whole life, you know? And the pathway to love is often suffering. You know, the pathway to joy is often through suffering. It kind of, kind of sheds away all the exterior things. You know, and we and it gets down to just do I love God for what he can do for me do I, or do I love God for who he is? You know, do I have a mercenary love for God because he's blessing me my socks off or do I just lo- do I love him because God is love? You know, so yeah, so at a young age, you know, but the thing is, is Deacon is everyone that's listening is Rocky Balboa. Every, every, every single person in this world, is, it's a world of adversity. And I used to think when things kind of went harder for me that, oh, well, you know, this will this is strange. Why is this happening to me? And I'll get over it. And then life will just be a breeze again. But actually life, if you're living it to the fullest, has its adversity. And it's, it's our response to that adversity. And I love what you said. You're going to meet Jesus at the cross. And it's, it's maybe not his cross. Maybe it's your cross. And you know, the cross that you've been given to bear is, is where we, is where we find Jesus. And I know, um, it is indeed the joy of the Lord that's our strength. And there is a peace that passes. There's three types of peace. There's the peace that comes like after you've won a war. And mm-hmm. we want to be those people. We want to be victorious in our life. We want to face the challenges, turn and face them, make good decisions, one little decision at a time, show fortitude, and, and, and win the peace by it comes from victory. There's also a peace that, that just comes from things being in order. And when we read the Catholic Catechism, when we order our life according to the virtues and the moral teaching of the church, but you know, Deacon, there's that peace that passes understanding that comes from, that just comes from the presence of the Lord in our lives. And, you know, I I remember when I was about 19, I wrote a little poem, poem, 
happiness depends on happening. Happiness, oh, wow. happiness depends on happenings. It comes and goes with the tide. But joy comes from the Holy Spirit inside. And that is Oh, that's little, beautiful. But it is true because oh. if you're going to be if you're if you're your state stage of of mood is based on what's happening around you, you're going to be you're going to be in a tough situation, but if you just have this sense of the presence of the Lord in your life, practicing the presence of of God, right? Practicing it, yeah. practicing. And we do that through the day, I have my on my wrist. I wear my my Jesus uh, rope ah. you know, from the ancient monks of the desert because I'm a Benedictine oblate, and we pray the Jesus. Prayer. Oh, excellent! Okay, so yeah, I that. thought that was a Benedictine medal. Yeah, and and then of course the exorcism medal on the other wrist uh, band. But then uh, to pray the rosary through the day, or just but to say just the Jesus prayers. I'm walking down the street, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the Living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And often I just when I pray that prayer. I'll pray it, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Then I'll say just, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God. Jesus, Lord Jesus. And then just Jesus. And so often when I'm walking down the street and I see people here in Waikiki, the happiest place in the earth, and they don't look that happy, some of them, just to yeah. say the name of Jesus over them, you know, but just to always bring Jesus to every situation. We're talking with Deacon Gerard Marie. I told you this is going to go by fast. we got two more segments with him, so don't go away. And we're going to talk about this whole thing about uh, this great divide that seems to be being perpetrated on the United States in a diabolical way uh, in regards to race. This is not a political show, and this isn't a political issue. This has to do with the dig dignity of, of every human person, and we'll be right back to talk about that. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be, we'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have with our, as our guest today Deacon Gerard Marie from the Marie from the Archdiocese of Arlington. You know, Deacon, uh, sometimes we choose our battles, but sometimes the battles choose us. I mean, you and, didn't know you, you didn't know you were going to be born to be an African American, right? You didn't you, you didn't knew that, but but the Lord did. He formed you in His mother in your mother's womb. He gave you this beautiful spiritual soul to long for Him, to love Him, to to have a desire to serve, to desire truth, beauty, justice unconditional love and now here we are in this middle of this race war and as i said at the beginning of our uh of our it's almost like it's being perpetrated it's being thrown on us it's being perpetrated uh against the human race and i know like here in hawaii i'm a minority i mean i'm, I'm still caucasian so i'm, I'm i kind of have a little bit of advantage in, or maybe a lot in some ways but uh here in, here in hawaii i'm a minority so i get i get a sense of i understand a little bit and my children understand that a little bit although we're so loved and uh, uh, Hawaii has so much love. Uh, wh what tell us about your personal experience growing up as an African American, and what do you have to say to what's going on right now? We just want you to to d dive in head first, go deep with us right now. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think you hit you said something that hit the nail on the head. This is not a political issue; it's a matter of love and family. That's what I mean. That's what this is really. Yes, I grew up as African American, but we I grew up in a neighborhood where I had a whole bunch of different nationalities in there. And I have 12 people that I call my sisters. Um, and they, we just grew up together. Kind of like what you're talking about, like with your cousins and stuff like that. Yeah. I have sisters yeah. like that. Yeah. So some of them are black. Some of them are Vietnamese. Some of them are Filipino. Some of them are Portuguese. Uh, some of them are white. But 
The thing is, I love all of them and their families love me. It's a matter of family, not just of race. And growing up African-American, yeah, I mean, there was, there. I mean, I grew up, there were things that happened, but the thing is we must realize that we can't just simply say, because one thing happened to me, everybody is bad, you know? Um, if we if we do that, they actually they have something that's called a cognitive distortion, and that's one of them. You have a bad situation and you apply it to everybody, right? Yeah. So, like, let's say I I tripped over a desk when I was younger, and and I'm somewhat clumsy, so that could actually happen, right? But then when I ever I look at a desk, I now think I'm going to trip again. That doesn't rationally follow, and that's mm. the same thing um, with this critical race theory you can't say well what is that, critical race theory so critical race theory i would say in a, in a simplified form it's a theory that we should be critical of because it focuses on comparison versus contributions and it limits the person to just their race instead of seeing the entire person like yes i am african-american but there's more to me than just my skin color I am a coach. I like to laugh. I'm a deacon. I'm a brother. I'm a son. The critical race theory pushes all that aside and says, no, you're just your skin color. You're just someone that we have to mistrust. And because we're critical of just what everybody else is and we're comparing ourselves constantly, we can never be content or thankful for who God has made us or who God has made us. Our brother or sister in the Lord. Does it also make us uh, have a victim mentality? Yes. And that's where we have to be careful because if it's always a comparison thing, there's a power struggle, right? And that's where you get its Marxist roots. If there's always about, it's always is about power. You have more power than me. So therefore I'm a victim. What about, and if you see that, you're always going to feel the need to cut somebody else down so that you're equal, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about how you can contribute, how each of us have different gifts, God may have given you more money. He may have given you more athletic ability. I say this to my students sometimes. He may have given you more drawing ability because I can't draw to save my yeah, life. I always thought I'd be a good artist. I just thought I'm going to be a good artist. Now pick up a pencil. It's like... I drew a picture of you. You want to see the picture of me? And they would like, oh, you know, that was the end of my art career. <laughs> yeah, I always exactly. thought I'd be an artist, but I'm not. But yeah, but we all have different gifts. Mm -hmm. And those gifts, instead of comparing and saying, hey, oh, well, you have that. I don't. That's not fair. You can say, and this is from St. Catherine of Siena. She says, look, you can look at that other person and say, you can draw. I can't. Let's work together. That's love. Right. That's why God gave each of us different gifts, not so that we could tear each other down as the body of Christ, but that so we could work together, depend on one another and build each other up. Right. Right. And I mean, and this is love. And this is where like first John 420, I think it, it goes right in the face of critical race theory because it says, and I'll, I'm going to read it here. So I got my little Bible here. Hey, let me see your Bible. Yeah. So uh, let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, yeah. oh, it's a well-used Bible, everybody. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. They have a. <laughs> I love. I, I, I love it when. I love when you come in a room and people just stack stack Bibles up in the middle of the room. I think. Yeah. I, when people come in with their Bibles, they just stack. Let's see what. Let's see everybody's Bible. It looks kind of worn out. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, I'm it's, sorry. it's 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 got a crisp on it. Yeah. So oh, I love it. What a great Bible, well-used Bible. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, and it's it feeds us, but it gives us wisdom. And and this statement from First John chapter four twenty, it says. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has, who he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. If we're trying to build each other, and this is why we have to be critical of this, because it's producing jealousy, envy, and hatred at its root. And if we have to hate our brothers and sisters, just because they're a different race, how are we going to love the God whom we can't see? And I mean, and 
part of it is they have something that's called deconstruction, which gets on jealousy, then at least feeds to envy. But the thing is, what we don't realize is jealousy says you have something that I don't. And I want that thing. That's jealousy, which this is built on. You have that privilege. I don't. So I want it. But then it leads to envy, which is even worse. It's worse. You have something I don't. And I hate you for it. Right. Thomas Aquinas said that envy is worse than jealousy. It is. And I mean, because one of them is a capital sin. But the other one, jealousy, St. Paul says in the letter to Corinthians, he says, love is patient. Love is kind. It's not selfish. It's not jealous. So both of them are against the very nature of God and the very gift that he's given us, which is love. And it says, and, and love does not easily take offense. And all yes. we see Amen. is people. Amen. Do, I, and you know what's interesting is I'm offended. Not at something you did for me, but something you did to someone else. And that other person may not even be offended. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know my, 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 yeah. So, I mean, and, and the thing is, is when you're offended, when you're, when someone wrongs you, let's put it that way, because being offended is a choice. But when mm-hmm. someone wrongs you, God gives you the grace to forgive that person and to become a better, to become a bigger, better person because of it and to deal with the adversity. But he doesn't give the person next to you that grace. You know what I mean? That's not, for, hey, yes, that's exactly. none of your business, you know. <laughs> and so, so you see people, love does not take offense. Yeah. That's all you hear about. Oh, I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. I had someone once, my wife had made this really beautiful costume, and maybe it, nowadays people wouldn't wear it, but it was a beautiful uh-huh. Native American Indian princess costume. Yeah. And someone said to her, you know, I take offense at you we- you know, you know, wearing that. And they don't know she's 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 uh, has a lot of Indian blood in her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, yeah. And that's where, I mean, with all of this, it's like people are saying, like, I'm offended for you. But it's like kind of like you're saying, it's like, but I'm not offended. I mean, even some of the stuff, they're acts of love. Um, Yeah. Just because you come from things from a different point of view doesn't mean that it's not loving. So if you look at the heart rather than just kind of projecting an intention on somebody, which ironically, that also is a sin. It goes against the Eighth Commandment. That's called rash judgment. Right. You're saying, I know what you mean when you do that. That's rash judgment. And I always say, like, the sin of racism and rash judgment cost, Same they thing. both cost, yes, $5.58. And what I mean by that is not, you know, playing let's make a deal, but $5.58, the 58 cents is because it violates the fifth and the eighth commandment. Uh-huh. You're killing their soul. You're killing their neighbor by labeling them. And then you're bearing false witness. Mm-hmm. $5, the money question is this. Rash judgment and racism both can be defined with the same five words. The absence of God's love. We'll be right back. We're talking with Deacon Gerard Marie from the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia. And we're going to dig a little bit more into this this, this whole area. And let's break, let's break some... Uh, Let's break some stereotypes and let's get down to the basic fact that we are made in God's image. Imagio Day. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Oh, 
Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I, I, I just love this conversation with Deacon Gerard Marie from the, Ar- the Diocese of, of Virginia. We're talking about critical race theory. I think the whole thing there is critical, right? It's like there's this critical spirit. You know, I always took great, I, know, I was raised by, by a mother and father that always um, had great love, especially for the African Americans. And uh, I'd always go out of my way, maybe in a way, to, to show dignity. Even though there was often a great chasm, like you know, uh, I, I was raised in a l- largely white and Latino area of California, but you know, sitting at my coffee shop here, Kai Coffee, every now and then, uh, uh, African American family will sit next to us outside. You know, my wife and I go down and we do the liturgy of the hours, and it's become so awkward. I mean, in the past, I would uh, I would like, ah, oh, beautiful children, you know, and and now it seems like, do they think I'm? If I say that, do they do they think I'm patronizing them or? Or can I build that bridge? They, they, it's become like this huge elephant in the room where not many years ago I could, I just found great, great an ease of conversation. And now there's like this thing. And, yeah. and, and I don't know if I'm being judged or they think I'm judging them or, 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 or on the other hand, am I patronizing them? And, and so where do we, where do we go? How, how do we, how, what is, what is God's prescription for this? Well, I think, uh, some of it i would say there's three things that i would say well we have to go with this first we have to realize that that elephant in the room is an elephant that doesn't need to be there Mm. oftentimes so we're thinking the elephant is that elephant is like you're saying are you judging me can we get along can we can we actually talk together yeah love doesn't suspect Mm -hmm. love just gives and if you have two hearts that are coming together, that elephant is going to leave because it's being pressured out by the greatest, the greatest gift that God has given us, which is love. So the love pushes the elephant out of the room, right? The second thing I think we have to do in order to get rid of this is to understand that there's a difference between even just worldviews with kind of living for God trying to even live for your fellow brother and sister mankind versus the critical race theory. And these are there's three different views that are going up. And say like the godly man worldview, we're equal in dignity. As the Catholic, uh, as the, the critical race theory, it's equal in outcome, meaning, mm. okay, we all have to be the same. We all have to be able to uh, not have be able to be exchanged from each other like you should look like me but the reality is we don't look like each other like we're talking about we all have different gifts we're equal in dignity and those gifts can be up up upheld but we're not just interchangeable parts Mm. each person is unique Mm -hmm. so your asianist versus your caucasianist versus your african american is for three different people each of those are unique but even amongst amidst those races there's still something special about you because love doesn't say i can change you and for you love says you alone like fulton sheen would say Mm. and that's where we have to do so the equality comes in up upholding things secondly with diversity diversity has to be balanced with unity this is where critical race theory gets it all wrong if you have difference and unity that image is the trinity that's what we need to do because we're made in the image and likeness of god that's why america we have to say is not a systematically racist country it actually has in its foundation this image where it has i'm gonna look it up here E pluribus unum, out of many, one. From our many differences, we come together as one. One nation, one common union. We embrace the different cultures and backgrounds. As critical race theory, on the other hand, they say we should have diversity without unity. But that leads to chaos, conflict. You're different but we're not together. So therefore we have to butt heads all the time. But it also has unity without diversity, which leads to a utilitarian conformity. 
yeah, conformity. Everyone yeah. has to think like me. You oh, yeah. can't have your own opinion. Well, right? if you're African American, you mu- you have to think like this. Or if you're exactly. a Caucasian, you have to think like this and it's it, it's 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 racist. It's a exactly. racist uh, you know, yeah, to stereotype everybody according to skin color. How, how silly can you be? Yeah, and I mean and that doesn't allow you to to bring up your gifts. So like and I mean I've talked to people about this even with families. They're like, "Yeah, I'm black, but you know, hey, I like classical music." That's not quote being a sellout. That's you just like something different, you yeah. know? I, I mean, that's that's okay, you know? Um but then I think also with this, so you know, another thing is America promotes this this unity and diversity. But more importantly, and I think this is the third thing we have to realize, we have to take the time to get out of our comfort zones to reach out to one another. That is, instead of saying, I can't talk to you because you're whatever race you are, take the time to listen to one another. I always say, if you have a time to listen, you hear them, H-E-A-R, right? But then you take in the other person's experience. You add the T. What do you get? Heart. Mm. And when you can touch people's hearts and listen to their hearts, that's when people can start coming together. Because the heart, when it speaks to another heart, doesn't just stop at the skin. It goes throughout the whole body. And everybody's heart's kind of the same color, isn't it? Exactly. Yes, exactly. (laughs) We're all we're all red. Or blue, you know. And- <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. If there's oxygen in it, it's red, and if there's no oxygen, it's blue. I think I forget exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, um, I'm. It's so interesting how it's uh, speaking as a Caucasian. How it's almost a reverse. Uh, there's a reverse uh, racism going on now. If you're if you're white. Then you're a then you're a bad person, and you're privileged, and and uh, uh, you, you you know you don't hear anything about the 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 underprivileged white white person, you know. Yeah. I mean, and uh, and yeah. So go ahead, speak to speak I to that. Say, one of my sisters was like that. I mean, she grew up poor, just like with me, and you know we love each other dearly, but I mean it's like yeah, she's not privileged because she grew up poor, just like I did, you know. And I mean that's. That's one when you say things. sisters, you mean this this mixed community of friends, right? Yeah. That you grew up. Yeah, with? exactly. Yeah. My twelve, yeah. And so tell I us have... now, now in that light, what were you saying? Oh, one, of your, one, of your, one of your young, one, the, this sisters group is just a great diversity of friends that you had growing up in your in your community. And so, what, what was she saying? Oh yeah, so so I mean, she would say, I mean, I mean, she would just always say like, "Look, I love you." I mean, and I mean, she's that's like the biggest message. She didn't say. A, I'm white, you're black, so we need to separate. It's just always, I love you, you know. I mean, and there's I mean, a difference between saying I pity you and I affirm you. Yes, and and that even because I I do some work with the poor as well in one of my apostolates. Yes, most of the people that we talk to, yeah, we can give them things, but the thing that really makes their day is when we just stop and acknowledge them as a person. And right. that's that's what we have to do, even with all of this race theory. Don't just look at them as someone that needs to either stop oppressing or being oppressed. The Lord died so that we could love one another. Who are we to say to the Lord, well, your sacrifice on the cross isn't good enough. Yeah. We're still going to hate each other. And, you know, that's I, wrong. And I just, you know, I just don't experience I guess people would say I'm I'm a, I'm crazy if I don't say that because here in Hawaii they used to have kill kill Howley Friday right that's the what they call a, call a, the Caucasians you know uh, uh-huh. and there there is angst there uh, and there there's angst probably both ways but it's just like uh, I I feel almost untouched by it because I, I on the other hand I experience so much love here in the islands we've been talking with Deacon Gerard Marie what's your website again Deacon so it's www dot jmj gerard marie dot com and that's and, george elephant roger apple roger dog 
And Marie. Man. <laughs> and Marie. Yeah, Marie, Marie. Yes. <laughs> D, uh, So jmjgerardmarie.com. And we'd really like for you guys to go to deepadventure.com and send us your comments about what you've heard today. We're definitely going to invite Deacon back, and we, we hope that uh, we hope that it's 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 uh, given us all some hope and uh, and that we learn to cherish and and, uh, and love one another. Uh, you know, here at uh, here in Hawaii, Haole means to have no breath. When Captain Cook first came to the islands, uh, he didn't uh, breathe. He, he didn't nose breathe the greeting. He shook hands. Here in Hawaii, the men touch foreheads and we exchange breath, and the women come right next to your cheek. I got to go to Nina's birthday party on Sunday, and she came up and put her cheek right against my cheek, and, she, and the girls share breath that way. And uh, she's a little 15-year-old girl that we just love here. And people, we need to begin to share breath. Aloha means to give breath. We need to begin to share breath. And Jesus said, my peace I live, leave with you, my peace I give you. And he breathed his spirit upon them. And so, Deacon, uh, we'll, we'll write to you. We'll have you back again. But uh, next time, uh, till next time, this is Bear Wozniak with TheDeepAdventure.com, uh, The Bear Wozniak Adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to DeepAdventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.